I published an article today about um, about Andreas Antonopoulos resigning from the Bitcoin Foundation. He publicly announced this over Twitter and started a pretty heated argument over Twitter. Uh, Gavin and G- Andreessen chimed in. Um, John Matonis chimed in, who's the executive director of the Bitcoin Foundation. And Matonis and Andreessen um, were basically trying to defend the foundation from Andreas's um, criticisms, which were that it's too secretive, it's not transparent enough, um, the management doesn't uh, doesn't um, release enough information to people who are involved in the foundation and also to people who are involved in Bitcoin, period. So that's why Andreas quit. And uh, in researching that article, I came across some really startling um, statistics concerning the foundation's finances. Um, I looked at their 2013 tax form, which they have posted on their website, and they made over $350,000 from membership dues alone. So like people who want to join the foundation, there's different levels of like of membership they can join as, you know, it ranges from like $25 to, you know, thousands of dollars if you're a highly successful Bitcoin startup. And they, they make nearly half a million dollars just from those dues alone. Those don't even include other sources of revenue and you know the vast majority of their expenses go towards uh lobbying the political structure in Washington and then the rest of it pretty much goes towards salaries for the employees of the foundation and um no we we now know that there's very few actual computer scientists and developers who work on the code itself so the the majority of the salaries, just that, is is going towards people like Brock Pierce, John Matonis, um, and and other executives in the company who don't even improve Bitcoin in any sub- substantial way. They're basically like um, I don't know you, what, what you would call it. They're like figureheads or you know just yeah. faces to to like they're like leadership roles, but they aren't actually doing anything to improve the code. And I think that. People who pay membership dues to the foundation need to wake up and realize that their money isn't actually going towards improving Bitcoin. It's going towards these, these, first of all, gigantic salaries for people like Brock Pierce, who aren't even working on Bitcoin. And secondly, like it's going towards political lobbying. They hired the, the biggest um, or one of the biggest lobbying firms in the United States, Thorson French Advocacy the same lobbying firm that is used by uh, major pharmaceutical companies, recording industry um, groups who who use copyright law to attack end users with ridiculous lawsuits. And it's like, what? what is the Bitcoin Foundation doing? What people need to realize, they need to stop giving these people money. They're not, they're not spending it wisely. That's... Yeah, that's they... You know, it's been it's been a very long time um, since they've actually done anything useful. Like, you know, in the in the past, you know, just like in the past year, um, Coinbase and BitPay have done more. You know, in terms of getting major businesses to accept Bitcoin, yeah. You know, than the Bitcoin Foundation has, and that's you know that's like part of their mission statement is to you know. Um, spread the acceptance of Bitcoin, you know, around the world. They're not doing that. Um, they're not giving any funding towards core development. So, you, you know, we're not going to solve any of the major flaws in the protocol. Like, you know, um, like the possibility of mining centralization. That's not going to happen with the Bitcoin Foundation. And um, so what they've been doing for however long is they've been just been hanging out with governments and like basically begging them to act favorably towards Bitcoin and yeah. so far in many cases they haven't been successful in doing that. Yeah. So what are they doing? What are they contributing to improving Bitcoin? How are they making it a better monetary system yeah. that everybody in the world can use? They're not doing it they're not doing anything. 
It seems it's, like, yeah. I don't know, like, it seems like they, they have this idea that Bitcoin is already finished. Like, it's as good as it's going to get. We don't need to improve it anymore. It's already the best thing ever, the best thing since sliced bread. No one needs to improve it. It's got no issues. And we're, we're, we're done with that. We're just going to basically promote it to the United States government and get them to well, act favorably towards it. What does that even mean? Like, what what concrete, like like results do they hope to get from lobbying are they trying to get like a law passed that requires everyone to use bitcoin i don't think that's going to happen <laughs> yeah, so like, what are I mean, they lobbying for if if they're pursuing if they're pursuing you know political action to you know get governments to act favorably towards bitcoin all they're going to get you know is uh, is legislation out of it they're just going to get you know it might not it, it won't be if they're successful you know the governments won't ban bitcoin but they'll construct this huge regulatory infrastructure around it, and um, you know that's basically just going to turn it into another dollar. You know, <laughs> like mm, it, you know yeah. they're they're going to try to they're going to try to bring it under the control of the central banks, which is always a bad thing. Um, you know, they're gonna they're gonna implement regulation that restricts exchange competition. So you know mm. we might. Uh, inch closer towards an exchange monopoly, which could become another Mt. Gox. Like these are the things that the Bitcoin Foundation is going to accomplish with yeah. their political activism. Yeah. These um, so-called good really, results they want. Yeah, what really needs to be done is improving the core protocol because if they, I, you know, I don't know if the Bitcoin Foundation thinks that Bitcoin is perfect already. You know, I. But if it, if they do assume that, if that's what they believe, um. You know, then why are there six hundred other altcoins? You know, if Bitcoin was perfect, yeah. then there would be no reason to create an altcoin to compete with Bitcoin. So, and I mean, obviously Brock Pierce understands that because he's creating real coin. So, <laughs> yeah. So I just maybe don't he get knows it. something that the rest of the foundation doesn't somehow. Yeah, yeah I just <laughs> don't get it. I don't understand why um, the Bitcoin Foundation t made such a radical change in their focus. Like, you know, they. Yeah they were doing like really good things like they were helping businesses accept bitcoin things mm -hmm. like that you know they're providing like the bitcoin accepted here stickers uh mm. teaching people how to use coinbase uh, or or you know online wallets and things like that mm. but now they're just hanging out you know with politicians all the time and now just recently you know a couple of days ago they've hired this huge lobbying firm like they're really yeah. not that much different from um a political action committee anymore, right. you know? Yeah, I think that's basically what they are at this point. I mean, we should start referring to them as that. They're a political action committee. They're a lobbying group. Um, that's what they are. They're just they're the they're, they're they're the political arm of the Bitcoin community, which is like an oxymoron almost because <laughs> so many in the Bitcoin community don't give a shit about corrupt politics. <laughs> But the Bitcoin Foundation, which started out as this really uh, positive group that was doing a lot towards promoting adoption and such, and 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 was actually paying several people to work on the code, and now it's just falling apart. And it's like they're just getting in bed with with politicians and lobbyists and regular regulators, hoping to. I mean, I don't want to sound like too cynical, but it, like maybe they're just hoping to to get favorable legislation passed that helps their group specifically. Maybe they don't care that much about how Bitcoin overall succeeds and how end users um, get some positive benefit out of it. They're just looking to pad their own pockets and increase their own influence, gain more power for themselves um, with the political establishment in the United States. Well, I mean, they did have Mark Carpolos on the board at some point, you know, so that's not too far-fetched of a theory. Um, but they should be at least somewhat concerned about the end state of Bitcoin because their entire existence is dependent upon it. Hmm. You know, like, let's let's say they are successful and they, they pass all these regulations, you know, but that just sets the precedent for government control over Bitcoin. So, yep. you know, if if they inadvertently get Bitcoin regulated out of existence, then, you know, they're their money supply dries up. Like, they're not going to get paid to promote something that doesn't exist. Like, yeah. And in that case, just... like, if somehow Bitcoin did die because of, like, inadvertent, like, bad regulatory action or something like that, 
these assholes would just move to a different altcoin and start promoting that to Washington or whatever. You know, it, like if Bitcoin dies, do you really think that Brock Pierce would have any hesitation at all in basically propping up Realcoin as the new alternative to Bitcoin that is, you know, more secure, more stable, less volatile, and basically yeah. promoting that to yeah, Washington? It- that wouldn't surprise me at all because Brock Pierce is already going all in with this, you know. Like he's been in contact with several different banks mm-hmm. trying to get Realcoin integrated into their ATM system. You know, so if so like just however long he's been working on this project, he's put more effort into it than he's ever put into Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. like no no good is gonna ever come from the Bitcoin Foundation from this point forward. You know, they're just digging themselves into a hole. Uh, you know, as soon as, as soon as they started hanging out with governments, they started acting like government Mm -hmm. and that's just, that's going to be their downfall because, um, you know, Bitcoin is not, you know, some political concept. It's just, it's a a monetary, it's an actual monetary system. system. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like whether or not the politicians favor it, there's always going to be people that use it as long as there are people that value it. So they're really just wasting their time. 